Hey YouTube, um, this is my Singer 111W153 uh, compound walking machine, sewing machine. Um, I, I have some I have some new problems. If you were uh, following my videos, uh, you could you could see some of the problems I was going through. The machine kind of worked uh, when I got it. Uh, you know, I got it from some guy that didn't really know a lot about it. Uh, so it kind of worked when I got it, but it had some feeding issues. It had some stitch issues. Uh, I thought it was kind of timing issues. And long story short, um, I started to fix that or figure out how to fix that. And I realized that the um, the drive shaft had a lot of rock back and forth, left and right of uh, left and right play. So um, let me show you what I did with that. And I have some new problems that now I think I made it completely worse. I might have even I really have no idea what I did, um, but I do know that it's just not working now. It's not feeding. It's not feeding the material. It's stitching right. The hook is seems to be working right, but now the feed dogs are not walking the material back and forth. It's actually like stationary. It's not really doing anything. You can kind of see, you can kind of see what it's doing. Uh, it's just not, it's not feeding the material back. Um, and what I noticed was, um, if you look up through in, if you look through here in the guts, you can kind of see the oil marks where the shafts were going up and down and they're just not getting to that point. So they're, they're, they're not traveling through the full range that it, it was doing. Um, so that could be uh, part of the problem, part of the feed problem. Maybe that's why it's not really feeding the material all the way back and forth. You can kind of see it. You can kind of see it up here where the oil marks are. You can see it down below here where the oil marks are. I don't know if you could see that on camera. I don't know if you could see that, but right up in here, there's an oil mark. Can you see that oil mark? That used to go up higher. Uh, you could see where the oil mark is. And now it doesn't go up quite as high. So that's part of the problem. But let me flip the machine over and I'll show you uh, what I was playing around with. Maybe something I did caused this to happen and caused that to happen. Um, so let me flip it over real quick. All right, so this is the guts of the machine where everything was driven. Oops. Um, so what I did, right or wrong, because again, I'm learning as I go and, and the problem is I don't really have any reference point other than some uh, kind of, you know, old school scanned uh, paperwork that has been sort of somewhat helpful. But anyway, so the problem was the shaft was had a lot of rock back and forth. And because of that rock, it, it moves this gear, which turns this gear, which turns the hook. So essentially, the hook timing could have been changing pretty much freely, um, you know, at, at will, sort of say. So anyway, um, I wasn't sure how to get that play out and what I kind of did to get it out was uh, there is there's a bearing right there or I should say a, uh, I don't know what you want to call it but this thing right here this sleeve that is that is oval um, it's not round it's oval that thing makes this thing and the feed dog go up or down um, I'm quite certain I kept it in the same location because it does have a, um, a set screw with a, a flat on the drive shaft. So the machine screw is on the flat 
which to me is correct. Um, so I pushed it, I basically pushed the shaft to the right, kind of where it seemed to stop. Uh, you know, there's still some showing there, so it's not bad. It's still showing there, right here. Um, so I pushed it over to the right where it seemed to stop. Then I took this part off, loosened this, this sleeve, and I pushed it all the way to the right as far as it would go so that, you know, it, so the drive shaft could not come back over to the left. So I kind of have this pretty darn close here. You know, I don't know if that's going to create a problem or not, but that's one thing I did. So now by doing that, this arm seemed to be not sitting properly in this sleeve. It was kind of like, you know, off-centered. So what I did to help that out um, was I loosened this bolt and I squished this whole mechanism over to the right a little tiny bit. Well, first I loosened this, that popped off, and I did loosen two screws here, which I'll show you, here and here. Now, I was kind of thinking that this whole mechanism would freely move, and maybe it does, but maybe because it hasn't been moved in so many years, it's just frozen on there, but it, this part did not move um, on the shaft. So I don't know if I messed something up by playing with these two screws. But anyway, I loosened this screw here and I pushed the shaft over. You can kind of see how much it moved. It moved probably, you know, that's not quite an eighth of an inch. But it moved from here to here. This thing moved over which basically lined it up properly here. So this looks good. I didn't think there would be any harm by loosening this and moving this arm over and tightening it because it, it didn't lose its space, you know, it didn't lose its uh, alignment here. Um, this, I just compressed with my hands this way and tightened these back so it's flush here. You know, this thing is under tension a little bit uh, you know, this, this part lines up with the, the push button up top here. So I was paying attention to that. I was paying attention to this and this. So basically this, this, uh, slit here needs to line up with this presser button up top, which it does. So that stayed correct. I moved this over to compensate for me pushing the the whole shaft over a hair. Um, I set, okay, so here's the other thing I did. And again, maybe this messed it all up too. Um, <laughs> I took the, uh, the needle, no, I'm sorry, the, uh, the bobbin case out and the hook case out. I wanted, I wanted to make sure there was no thread stuck in there and I wanted to make sure it was clean and just so I had a fresh start. So I basically loosened this. There's two bolts here, or at least one bolt. And I popped the whole, you know, the whole thing out. That's the shaft right there. That whole thing came out. Uh, and everything looked good. I cleaned it, you know, it was a little gunked up, but I cleaned it. And I put everything back uh, as best I could. And then, I adjusted, you know, I loosened this again and I basically adjusted the timing, the hook timing, to the needle. And then I fastened the set screws here to hold its placement. Now, I don't think that has anything to do with the feed dog movement and my feeding, my material feed issue. Uh, I don't know exactly what I did to cause that to change. You know, potentially, you know, I was playing around with this spacing because this can go up or down this way a little bit. But uh, I don't honestly know what I did to that changed that. So let me uh, put the machine down again and take a closer look at it. Actually, so just so you can see, 
what's going on here. Maybe somebody out there could just look at it and be like, oh yeah, you did that wrong. So watch what happens when I um if I put this up right that comes up and if I just um, put a piece of again this is just bicycle tube which it should be able to feed this no problem when I was actually when I had thread in here and I went to sew like watch um, I'll put a, a mark here. Right, so if you watch that mark, that thing should should feed it through, and it's just not doing anything. What, what the heck? It almost seems like the bar is not coming forward enough and walking enough. And I do not know why. You know, the feed dogs seem to come up. You know, maybe the feed dogs are not coming up enough, actually. Because that's right there at, at its highest, and it kind of feels flush. So maybe that's a problem right there. Maybe that's part of it. So I put this down, and also, when this is at its lowest point, you know, I don't know how much room you're supposed to have under there, but there's, I would think that there should be less gap there. And I was reading about, you know, changing the heights of these things by some of the some of the back mechanisms. But quite honestly, I don't want to touch those because I didn't touch those at all. So I, sh I feel like I shouldn't really touch that at all. So it's kind of annoying um, now that I seem to have got the, the hook timing correct. I messed something else up. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and actually, while it, when it was working, I was having some issues with um, changing the stitch length. It, it seemed like it wasn't really stitching that long, actually. So, as you can see, this was from my other videos. Um, all of a sudden, it went from, you know, halfway decent to super tight stitches. And I don't know what I did to cause that. I mean, it looks kind of cool, but that's not what I want. And that was actually at the highest setting. So somehow or another, I need to almost like like reset the the adjustable stitch mechanism. Like somehow maybe that got turned and it's just set at its lower point instead of a higher point. I don't know. Maybe I'm hoping some of you guys know out there. And uh, it would be great if you guys could post a video showing... Uh, 
you know, any, any of these ideas uh, or issues that you guys could figure out or, or know about, uh, a video would be super helpful. Um, thanks. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully somebody will chime in. Thanks.